right, today is October 22nd. I'm out here with my cousin Timothy. We made it to our glassing knob about like 40 minutes ago and we came this morning so we weren't gonna be able to hunt the morning but we decided to pack the jet boil and some some chow mein and yakisoba noodles and figured heck it's gonna be so cold so let's eat something warm for lunch because right now we haven't seen any deer which we're not surprised because they're probably all bedded in the timber so we're just gonna chill for now and pretty much hunt the evening so it's a good change of pace from eating cold dry food So today is October 23rd, it's the day after, and today we are supposed to be getting hit with a hard snowstorm. Right now it is snowing pretty crazy. The ground is already starting to whiten up, so we're in for a big snow surprise today. It's not really a surprise because we knew from it from the forecast, but usually when it snows up here from the past couple years of experience, the hunting hasn't been all that great. So. So it's a little after 2 o'clock p.m. and this whole day it's been pretty unproductive. We've been pretty much getting snowed on all day. Ever since we left camp it's been snowing non-stop. We have not had one single break from the snow. As you guys can see behind me over here it's still snowing. Right now we're right around like seven inches of snow and it's still it's still going so I would not be surprised if we were around 10 to 12 inches at the end of the day because they said it's supposed to be snowing all day so we might not even be able to get a legit evening hunt because the visibility is so bad right now i mean we can kind of glass to this little ridge over here and the top of this ridge back here but it's just barely so i don't know it seems like all the deer are hunkered down just waiting for the visibility to get better waiting for the snow to stop waiting for the, mo the deer to move so if we don't see anything, then just come back tomorrow and try again.
All right, go for it. Fine. It wasn't as bad as I thought. Yeah. Alright, well, I'm not exactly sure how good my lens are right now because Tim and I just smashed through all that deadfall with a foot of snow on top. Finally made it back to the main road and we're just going to take this road back to camp. It took all day for us to finally see some deer for the day and it was actually just two does. We were just timber sneaking through this little valley right here because up where we were sitting and up where anything that was open and didn't have trees for cover it's probably right around 14 inches of snow and so i told tim i don't think these deer are going to be out feeding in 14 inches of snow if they can feed in these timbered areas where the snow is about half of that so when we came down here the snow level was only about six inches high and sure enough we got down here and those two does were just feeding around on black moss or lichen hanging off of the trees so just two does and it is still snowing so we're gonna go back to camp and just meet up with my uncle see how his day went see what the plan is for tomorrow today Timothy and I are doing a different hunt we changed plans from mule deer hunting to whitetail hunting so today we've got three valid tags Timothy has a buck tag, I have a buck tag, and I also have a doe tag. That's all valid in this particular unit right here. So today we're just gonna see if we can smack a big doe, or if we get lucky then maybe we'll shoot a buck. But that's the gist of what we're doing today. It snowed a lot, so a lot of the normal stomping grounds that I normally hunt can't really get to. So we're hiking into a brand new piece of land that I have never even hunted before, so we'll see how this goes. All right, so Timothy and I, we made it to this little spot that I saw on Onyx Maps, and pretty much this whole time, we basically just been walking through timber, but after you hike like two miles, all that timber just opens up and you can see a lot of little pockets along these ridges and so it's a good glassing area the shots are pretty ideal 150 yards 300 yards around that range so it's it's perfect for a rifle hunt we haven't seen anything today but with all the snow uh, there's a lot of fresh deer tracks that have been crossing right here and right there so we're kind of just set up right along two game trails so we're just gonna sit here and we're just gonna glass around as long as we don't freeze and then hopefully a doe or buck steps out and we can put some meat on the ground Got a moose rub right here. Broke it in half. Got some black here. Pretty big moose. Can be a small ball too, but it's a moose for sure. Completely broke it. Saw this lying down right here. All right, it's 4.45 p.m. It's the day after and Timothy and I, we decided to do one last push with the backcountry trip. So this whole afternoon we've packed up camp and we've been hiking our way way back in here and we just got done setting up our tent, hanging up our food and stuff like that. And we left camp and we came over to this big old bowl and 
it's a lot of glassing area here so we're just gonna sit tight and we have about an hour left of daylight so hopefully the deer start moving and if we get lucky we'll be able to shoot one today again I have both a doe and a buck tag so any whitetail deer I see today is fair game so fingers crossed we've yet to see a, a single whitetail deer here at all so fingers crossed we'll see how it goes Almost six o'clock, shooting hours are over. And right before shooting hour was over, spotted three deer. Literally thought that it was about to go down tonight, but I just never had a clear shot. You know, where we saw them, it was just little gaps and just a bunch of twigs and trees. And so I had one of them in my crosshairs for a brief second. I could have shot her, but with just how much twigs there was there and just the whole situation, it just didn't feel right for me to take that shot. So I just passed it up. Almost happened, but that's hunting. We'll give it another shot tomorrow. Matt. Matt. sun is just cresting over the horizon and we just had a missed opportunity at a doe and looks to be a buck they were at 300 yards I had them in my crosshairs for a little bit of time there could have pulled the trigger but I just wasn't rock solid so I didn't pull the trigger I was still adjusting my my rest to get a good solid shot 
and that's when they started hopping away and the second one stopped but he was like a, at a very sharp cording away and I had my crossers on him but as soon as it turned broadside like it started hopping around and at 306 yards I wasn't gonna take a running shot so we were just glassing around I just spotted another deer it's up on the horizon at first I thought it was a stump and then I was just glassing around I came back and I was like what the heck that stump is gone and sure enough I was like if that's a deer it has to be around here somewhere so like about 15 yards above where I saw that stump spotted it again looks like a doe she's on the literally on the horizon so hopefully she feeds her way towards us and we could get a shot that's three deer first light all right so we've been just glassing that deer that deer that I thought it was a stump it's actually a spike so Tim's up to bat he's a little far away I haven't even ranged it so let me range that really quick 530 yards out of range but yeah that's out of range man we'll see what he does we can always close the distance too yeah we can always just go to that ridge right there hey first buck first buck let's make Let's something happen today yeah so we've been just kind of been occupying that spike but he went off into the timber and i don't know where he went but I was just glassing around and I actually just spotted another deer. This one's a doe, 640 yards, but she's literally below the main road. So I can literally just walk this road and get close and take probably like a 200 yard shot. So she's just feeding. So I might pack up and make a run for it. So I decided to put a stalk on that doe, spotted her at 640 yards. I closed the distance all the way to about 120 yards. I left Tim, Tim was at our glassing knob then. Before I even got to my spot, Tim already flagged me that he couldn't see the doe. So the doe basically crested over that little ridge. But I just decided to sit there for a little bit, but she never popped back out. So I'm heading back over to Tim right now. We're gonna grab our stuff and we're gonna go over and Check out the other side. Whoa. Is that a bull? Yeah, that's a bull. We looped around that little bowl and right now we're in an even bigger bowl and it's a lot of country to glass here and I finally pick up the first deer. It's so far away my rangefinder can't even range it so it seems like she's gonna feed off into the timber soon and by the time we get there, if we even get there, she's probably gonna be long gone so we're just gonna try to find a deer that's a little bit closer. It's a lot of deer sign, a lot of deer back here, so it's only a matter of time before everything comes together. Gone close, could have pulled the trigger, just just didn't feel right in the situation, so hold off a little bit longer, just glass. If you don't see anything, take a nap, do all that stuff, and hit it hard for the evening hunt.
there's two right there. Huh? There's one in this one. One better over here. Oh, I'm just trying to look at this one. Because the bigger one's this one. They went to the other road over here. That's awesome, dude. Oh. Oh. Thanks for being here with I'm me, dude. Man. Thanks. That was a good shot, dude. Backstraps for dinner, baby. Backstraps for dinner. Backstraps for dinner. Well, folks, there it is. Timothy and I, we did it. Doe down. That's a. I think that's a pretty big doe. It was the biggest deer out of that whole group. But right before I shot, I actually spotted a fourth one. And I told Tim, like, there's four. But as soon as I shot, I guess Timothy said there was actually five deer and they were just all does. First shot, I, I hit him good, I guess. I don't know, we'll have to go find out. But my idea is if I shoot an animal and I hit it, and that animal is still like alive, like I can still see the animal is alive, I'm gonna keep shooting until that animal is dead. So I don't know what happened on the second shot. I think I got too excited. And then the third shot put her down for good. So, you know, that's just the way it goes sometimes. I would have loved to just have one shot and just see her fall down and dead, but that's just the way it is. Probably like 298 yards from where I sat. Right here where I ranged it, it was 300 yards. I was like, 300 yards, that's that's doable. So we can see her belly side up. So we gotta go get our backpack and stuff. We gotta go to the bottom and then we gotta pack her all the way back up here. Nice size doe. Yeah. Beautiful, beautiful doe. Meat. What a beautiful animal. Really beautiful. Right here. Right there. That's a good shot. She was like standing and then I just put in the lungs. Beautiful coat. Yeah. You can tell they're uh, starting to uh, starting to shed for winter coat. Yeah, Alright folks, well here she is. This is my doe for the 2020 hunting season. And here in Washington, if you're just a adult resident like me, you can't just buy this tag over the counter. This is actually a special permit hunt. And so I applied for a second deer tag, which the second deer tag basically allows you to shoot 
an antlerless deer in one particular unit. So this second deer tag that I have where I can shoot an antlerless deer is only valid for this particular unit right here. And so I told Timothy, I was like, hey, I have a, I have a second doe tag or I have a doe tag and let's back country in because the chances of us shooting a doe is pretty dang yeah. high. So we back countryed in here yesterday, spent like a couple hours just hiking in here. And yesterday evening, we could have shot one way closer to the truck and way closer to camp, but they just never provided me a clean opportunity. This morning, I had one at 300 yards, same distance, but those deer, those two deer were on full alert and I just never got a solid rest. And so they just hopped out of our lives. So we hiked over onto this backside and we spotted three deer way across a well over a thousand yards. And we were just chilling out of nowhere. We just hear this echo of a deer blowing way down in this valley. And I was like, hey, let's just grab the camera and let's just run down there. Let's see if we could shoot this deer. Sure enough, we came down here. We never saw that deer, but we got to that point right there, way up there. And I look right about here. I was like, dude, there's three deer bedded. And they were bedded. They had no idea that we were here. So I told Tim, hey, I was like, Tim, go grab the spotting scope because this is a perfect opportunity. This is the opportunity yeah. we've been praying for. They didn't know that we were up there. Yeah, they had no idea. They were just calm, collected. You know, they were just kind of napping. That's exactly what I want. You know, I want animals to have no idea that you're even there. Uh, that way they're not spooked. They're not jumpy. That way you can make a clean ethical shot. Granted, I hit her a little bit far back, but it was enough to put her down where she couldn't run. And so I was fortunate enough to put another one in her perfect spot and she just expired right on the spot. And so yeah. it's a big doe. This is uh, not a fawn by any means. This is just a good, good mature doe. You know, white tails, they're not that big, but this is definitely yeah. this is a, a good sized doe, nice. man. This is a super gorgeous animal. I'm super thankful for a lot of you. It's just a doe, but I don't care if it's a doe or it has the biggest antlers in the whole world, man. Taking a life's not easy. Yeah, we've had a few uh, tough seasons. And, yeah. Uh, this God gave this deer to us, you know, yep. we'll take it. God blessed us with this doe and all the glory goes to the big man above. Can't thank him enough. So it is hot right here. So we're going to take some pictures <laughs> yeah, and we're going to start, we're going to start gutting her out and taking care of the meat. And then I'm going to have to hide back up there and we're gonna go hang the meat somewhere cold and then we're gonna do an evening hunt because Tim has a buck tag and I have a buck tag. It just goes to show never give up because yeah. opportunities could be just over the next ridge. You never know. Just gotta keep trying. Yeah. Thank you buddy. Appreciate it. More. Thank you. Thanks for being here. Yeah, congrats man. Thanks for being here man. Dude this is probably like one of the most mature animals I've taken. Yeah, this is a very it's a, big, it's a It's a big doe. Yeah. Thank you, big girl. So right now I'm gonna get ready to notch my second deer tag. And for those of you who don't know anything about special permits, this is the difference. So right here you can see it says 2020 deer modern firearm tag. This is my general tag. This is the tag that you all can go buy over the counter. You don't have to apply for any special permits. This tag right here in this particular unit is valid for any buck. So any whitetail that has visible antlers, this tag is valid for it. It is not valid for a doe. However, over here you can see it says second deer. This is a special permit and you have to apply uh, every single year for this tag. And this, this tag right here is what allows me to shoot a doe in this particular unit. Again, these second deer tags are only valid for one particular unit that you decide to draw in. This tag right here is essentially good for the whole state. I could hunt four different units in the season if I wanted to for this tag, but for this tag, I have to hunt in this particular unit that I chose. So if you've never notched a deer tag before, it's pretty simple. So here in Washington, you have the months along the bottom, and then you have the days or the dates or the numbers along the sides. So for example, today is October 28th and that's the day I shot my doe. So what we're gonna do is we're gonna notch October. So just cut it like a V. So I notched October and today is the 28th. So I'm gonna go to the 28 marker right here and I'm gonna notch this one. There we go. 
And then once you do that, just remove this little piece right here. And there you go, officially tagged out on my second deer. All right, so there is the skin of the deer. You can see like it's literally just the skin. Right here, we have one hind quarter and one shoulder. We're gonna debone those here shortly. Right here, we also have a hind quarter and a shoulder and just some, I think those are just random pieces of meat on the body. And then over here, we're in the process of skinning out the head so we can take the skull with us. This is just a rib rack that we're gonna take with us too. The only thing that we are leaving behind is essentially its spine. And we just deboned everything off the spine. This right here are just some scraps. So we're gonna add that to the grind pile, make tacos, burger, all that stuff. Right here is the other side of the rib. We're also gonna pack that out. And then right here, I just have the meat covered in some snow just to cool it down. That's the advantage of hunting a snow. Uh, you don't really have to worry about the meat spoiling because you can just put them on snow, cover with them with snow, and then the meat will cool down very fast. So this right here is just one side of the neck. Neck roast, neck roast. That's the baby right there. That's one back strap. This one's already very cooled down. And then right here, that's the other back strap. I have to wipe out some, some guts because I did uh, hit the stomach lining a little bit. And then here's the gut pile. There's the organs. There's more organs. Right here, we have the tenderloin. There's the heart. Timothy wants to eat the heart. And then that's just another tenderloin. All right, folks, right now it's 2, 2.51. We shot her around 10.30, so from the shot to now, it's been about four hours. Now we gotta hike up to pretty much where we came from. It's a steep climb, but got my XL loaded up. Got his Mystery Ranch Metcalf loaded up. Just gun into Kafaro Gun Bear. He just has his on a, his backpack, the and then yeah. we're gonna start using our trekking poles. And up to the top we go and then we still have to go about another mile just to get back to camp so we're running low on daylight we're gonna slowly hunt our way back might pull a double we'll see Made it back to camp. Nothing prettier than camp when your pack is heavy. Time to start up the fire again. 
I'm gonna hold on. Oh no, it's all good. Dude, I have like water right there. I need the water hole. Oh, it's perfect. Got to remove the silver skin. That's one piece to eat. Pretty good. Mm -hmm. You guys already know, fresh back straps over the fire. Uh, this is pretty much what we're gonna be eating for dinner, plus a couple of dehydrated meals, but this is the real deal right here. So it's just a good treat for how hard we have worked just to shoot a doe, but can't thank the big man enough. This is uh my first ever successful backcountry hunting trip so definitely means a lot even though it was just a doe so we're just gonna dry up our stuff here and just finish eating this delicious back strap and then uh, repack our packs hang up the meat uh, overnight and pretty much until we come back to camp tomorrow hoping to put timothy on a buck tomorrow if we get lucky we'll pull a double on two bucks tomorrow but timothy's up to bat now since we both have buck tags and already shot a doe so